from Being Cozy Stitching. Melissa here, and today, oh, that's right, Halloween is over. The party's over. Goodbye until next year, little witchy hat. But if you've been following us over on Instagram, you know that we've put together a mystery puzzle block and we had our reveal on Halloween. And today I thought it'd be really, really fun to do a video and show you how to make this block in a step-by-step -step process. Now, this over here, this was our mystery block and it show, it featured a little kitty cat and a pumpkin and it was at night and it has a tree branch and the moon and yeah you probably could use it for a little longer than halloween but it is kind of themey and it is awfully awfully cute so there are when you go to print your pattern you want to make sure that you get all of the pieces there are four pages and these are two and these are two. And before you start groaning, oh, yes, that's absolutely correct. It is a paper pieced block. But I find paper piecing is so precise and accurate. And once you have the tips and tricks to do the job, it's not as hard as it really, really seems. So one of the things that you want to make sure that you have is some paper piecing paper comes in a package in a bundle like this. You don't necessarily have to buy this brand. I like this brand, but there are several, several different brands out there and any of them will do the job for you. You just want to make sure that it's thin and it's lightweight and that it'll tear easily so that when we're all done with our block, we're able to rip that paper off without ripping out all of our seams. And I do have a couple tricks along the way to help you so that those seams don't get ripped out so much um, or take as much abuse, but you still want to set yourself up for success. And by doing that, you get your paper piecing paper. The other thing that you might want to add to your list is an add a quarter ruler. Add a quarter rulers work really, really nice because they've got the shaded part for your quarter inch. They have a little lip. I'm hoping that you can see this. They have a little lip that snugs right over the top of your, um, your pattern or your template. And that way it doesn't slide around on you and you can get a nice clear cut with that. So do you have to have it? No, you really don't. Any ruler with a quarter inch marking on it will work just fine. Uh, because we're working with such small pieces, I would really suggest a two and a half by six and a half inch ruler. I wouldn't go any smaller than that. You don't want to cut your fingers. And I wouldn't go any bigger than that because the ruler is just going to get in the way and it's going to be awkward. So if you can work with a smaller size, you won't get quite as frustrated that way. Now, when we go to put the block together, because it is a 10 inch block, you're probably going to need a six and a half by 12 and a half inch ruler. Or if you're more comfortable, go ahead and use your six and a half by 24 inch ruler whatever works for you. Remember, this is about you enjoying what you're doing. So don't worry and don't get too caught up too much on the supplies. I will tell you what I use so that you know. Um, they're tried and true. I've used them several times. I like them. I could recommend them. Um, but at the end of the day, whatever works for you, that's what you use. So for other supplies, you're going to want um, a glue stick. Um, this is a glue pen. It's by Soline. I really like it. I pick it up at the local quilt store. I like it because the area where the glue comes out is so very small that you can accurately place the glue exactly where you want it to go. Now, do you need this fancy little pen? No. Is it nice to have? Absolutely. It makes the job much easier. But you can also go and get all kinds of glue sticks and school time when school starts is the perfect time of year to do it because they're all on sale and you can get them in bulk and, you know, don't be afraid of the glue sticks. They're not going to harm your sewing machine. They wash away completely and totally from your fabric. They're not going to ruin your project. They'll give you just what you need for as long as you need it, and then it goes away. So you will need some glue sticks. 
a thick piece of cardboard helps because we're going to be bending our pattern away from our fabric and I find if you put a little thicker piece of cardboard and you get so much junk mail that it's so easy to find a nice good piece of thicker card it's not really cardboard because it's thinner than that um, but you want something substantial that you can fold your pattern over get a nice straight line make it easier on yourself and you're gonna need a little pair of scissors you're gonna need a rotary cutter at some point you are gonna need to print your pattern out on your paper piecing pattern make sure that you print all four pieces out now when i printed mine out i went ahead and i cut the fourth page because i don't want to waste the paper piecing paper or the ink in my printer so i put these two on one sheet together and then these were each single sheets because they had multiple pieces on there but i found i could fit both of these pieces on one sheet of paper and that just saves me money so i can spend more money on fabric you know how it goes then the other thing you're going to need is you're going to need a selection of fabrics and i have a selection of fabrics here i have some kind of a gold modeled for my moon now i have a gray fabric for my cat if you want to stay true to the pattern you're going to want a piece of black but my little kitty which you will see a picture of that sweet little darling on instagram if you followed us along she happens to be gray and i always like to tailor my projects to fit my little kitty so i have a gray for my kitty i've got a beautiful textured orange for my pumpkin I have some green for my grass or my ground. You can choose green, brown, whatever you would like for your ground. I chose to do mine in kind of this Halloween-y green because I just like the color. Then you're going to want something to represent your night sky. I picked out a lovely mottled blue. Uh, it reminded me of a nighttime sky, so I thought that would work really pretty. And then I picked kind of a rusty color for my tree branches. Now it's awful close to my orange with my pumpkins because there's several different colors in there. It's that grunge fabric. And I just love grunge because there's all kinds of different colors in there. And I figured as far as the pattern goes, the tree branch is far enough away from the pumpkin that I really wasn't concerned. As you can see, the tree branch is way up here and the pumpkin's way over here. They're not going to be close enough next to each other that I really need to have um, a lot of separation with my color so that you can see it well. So that's what you need to get started. And then from there, what I like to do, and I'm going to go ahead and move some of this stuff out of the way so we've got some room to move. The other thing you're going to want to want to, or excuse me, the other thing you're going to want as well is a nice pen um, or pencil that we can um, mark up on because what I like to do because I tend to get kind of lost when I'm working with itty bitty teeny tiny little pieces I'm gonna set those up there because we are going to need those uh, what I like to do is I like to mark and I'm gonna hold this up so that you can see I like to write on it what it is on the moon parts, I put moon. On the sky parts, I put sky. And I put an initial for the colors that I need to use on those pieces and parts. So what we need to do from here is when you look on your pattern, in the top corner of your pattern, it will talk to you about the units and what the pieces and parts are in the units. And they have everything labeled so nice. Thimble Mouse did a wonderful job. For a free pattern, this is absolutely amazing. And I can't thank them enough. I really hope you take a minute to go out and check out their website. They've got some really cool stuff. Really cool stuff. Um, but anyway, as you can see, it'll say Unit B. And on top of your paper, it'll say Unit B. And then it will tell you that the sky is pieces two, four, and six. And there are little numbers, two, four, six. Those little tiny numbers tell you what those pieces are and what they should be. 
but I don't want to keep referring back to my pattern. So I just write on here, sky, sky, sky. And if I have multiple sky pieces, I will put, I want this one blue. So I'll put a B, blue for B, blue for B. Um, number 10 is also sky, B for blue. Number one is my branch. So I put tree and I put brown, BR for brown. And I just go ahead and I mark up all the pieces. Remember, this is all going to get ripped away. It doesn't matter if you write it in pencil or pen or whatever. Whatever you got handy, use it. You know me. If it works for you, use it. So after you get all of your pieces and your parts, and I do have all my pieces and parts, we're going to, believe it or not, I need a pair of scissors. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I thought it was a little more organized. I grabbed scissors, but I only grabbed little teeny tiny ones. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut our pieces apart. Make sure that you stay off that dotted line. See the dotted line that goes all the way around the edge? That dotted line we need. We need that. So leave that there. So rough cut around your pieces to break them apart so that you've got all of your pieces and parts ready to go. Lob them in a pile. And as you can see, we don't really have too many pieces here, so it won't take us too long to get this together. Okay, now I suggest you pick for the very first one, the very easiest one to do and kind of get your confidence built up and work at it one at a time. So what I suggest is that you get unit G. Unit G needs three pieces of fabric. The center fabric is your cat, whatever color your cat is. You've got a piece of sky here and you've got a piece of sky here. Now the numbers also correlating with your pattern to tell you what, um, what pieces are what. They also tell you in what order you need to sew your pieces. So when you go to get your fabric, because my I start with my kitty, you want to make sure that you have a piece of fabric big enough to cover and big enough that you've got enough for a seam allowance, your quarter inch. Because even though you see all these little lines on your pattern, you still need a quarter of an inch for your seam allowance. And maybe you want a little less than that when you're working on some of these itty bitty teeny tinies but I stick pretty true to the quarter of an inch because I need that I feel in my head you know it's kind of one of those things whatever works for you okay now you can see that my gray really will cover the whole pattern I'm going to come in a little more so you can see a little better but we don't put the fabric on top of this we need this as a guide to know where to sew. So what we're gonna do, and if you lift it up to the light, oh, you're gonna have a hard, you can kind of see the shadow there. Where that shadow is, that's what your fabric has to come across. So don't be afraid to hold it up to the light when you're doing this part. What I'd like you to do is put some glue from your glue stick right on this pattern right on the side that you need to put your fabric on okay because that's going to hold it in place so it doesn't move around on you now you need to put your fabric on the back side of the pattern remember this is the side that has no printing see and you need to make sure that it covers all of the seam lines when you lay it down and when you lay it down make sure that you're laying it down right side up. So the pretty side is sticking up. Okay, can you see that? I've got the good side of my fabric facing the sky. I've got my bad side on the glue. Okay, when I tip it over, 
and I hold it to a light, I can see that my gray fabric goes beyond all the way around. Okay, so now that I have that put together, what I need is my piece of cardboard because the next piece that we put on is number two. And that happens to be a piece of grass. So I need to make sure that I have enough. And, you know, I'm not afraid to cut my pieces bigger than I need them to be because I'm kind of in love with all those scraps anyway. Remember, I'm kind of the junk queen. So what you need to do now is put your piece of cardboard right on the line. Can you see that line? That's your stitching line. I need you to put the cardboard lined up right along that line. Grab your pattern and fold it back. It's okay to crease it. It's totally okay. Now, if you have an add a quarter ruler and you've never known how to use it, you're going to take that little lip and when you run your finger on it, you know what I'm talking about because you can feel it. You can kind of see it on video here. But that lip butts up right next to that piece of cardboard and your pattern. And it shows you my quarter inch seam allowance. And I cut beyond it and I get rid of that piece. And now I've got a perfect quarter inch piece of fabric. So, or excuse me, a perfect quarter inch seam with enough fabric, because remember where I have it folded, that's my stitching line. So now when I go to line up my grass, because remember we're working from the back side. When I go to line up my grass, I know this is my perfect quarter inch. I have to match that seam. So then I lay my green right next to that quarter inch seam. See how they lay right next to each other? And it's just perfect. It's exactly where I need it to be. Now, the other thing that I neglected to tell you that I have to run off and get here quick. You need to have some pins because you want to make sure that you don't sew all this. So randomly put in a couple pins. Keep it away from your seam line. That way you don't have to worry about it when you're stitching. You don't have to take them out. Nothing. Because remember, here's my stitching line. And my pins are way down here. Okay? Because when we flip it over, we're going to sew on this line. And that's going to give us our perfect quarter inch. So now there's a couple other things that we need to set up. I'm going to tip you over here so you can see the sewing machine, I hope. All right. When you set up your sewing machine, you want your stitch length to be at 1.8 or a couple ticks below the two. You want it to be a much smaller seam allowance so that it stays together and can hold up to the abuse from pulling the paper off. You want to have a good, good, good lock, a good foundation. Keep your stitches together. And then what we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to start beyond our stitching line. Oops, I had it in upside down. No wonder I couldn't figure out where to go. At this point, you might want an open-toed foot. It might make it easier for you. Um, that's totally up to you. I needed to move you. I need you to see this, because this is important. Can you see the black line? And I have it set up where I'm maybe three or four stitches beyond the end of the block here. We're going to anchor it beyond, and we're going to end beyond. So you're going to take a couple stitches in front of it and a couple stitches behind it, and that's going to anchor it. All right, so remember the paper doesn't bite. It gives us a leg up. It gives us perfect accuracy. 
Never be afraid to paper piece. It's a fabulous thing. Okay, so now I'm hoping you can see what I've done. We've sewn a little bit beyond on each side. Okay, and so then when we come over here, we can see that we have a perfect quarter inch. And if we fold the pattern back, they both line up a quarter of an inch. So we've done our job. Yay us. Okay, now you take your pins out. And what I like to do now, and this is a little tiny area, so, you know, do the best you can. I like to get my glue stick out, and I like to run a bead of glue along the uh, how do I explain this to you? I want you to run the glue on the pattern where you're going to press your fabric to. Because we're not going to hit this with an iron until we're all done. Okay, so do you see what I've done? I've put the glue so that it glues my piece together and it keeps it nice and flat just like if I had pressed it with an iron. I'm going to leave it long, longer than the pattern, until I get all the way finished. Ah, oh, there we go. Sorry, guys. I spent all that time talking and you didn't get to see. So what I've done, I want to make sure you get this. I've put my glue where my fabric is supposed to lay. And I've pushed it over as if I were pressing the fabric. So that the glue will hold it so that it stays nice and straight. Now I'm going to put a pin way beyond the pattern. Just because I don't want this piece of fabric to flip forward and then catch it when I sew somewhere else. So that's all set and ready to go. Now the next piece we have to do is this little piece of sky right here. So that's number three. So we get our piece of cardboard out. We line it up right on that line. We take our pattern and we fold it back, crease it so that it's nice and straight. We take our ruler, we line our ruler up right along the edge of that fabric. And then we trim away all of the excess background fabric, okay? Because we want to be left with our perfect quarter inch so that we know where to line up our fabric. So then we're going to open our pattern, open this up. Now this time we need a piece of sky. We need the sky to be bigger than the pattern piece, remember? Don't be skimpy here because when you go to flip it over, if it's not big enough, man, you're going to be mad. So you're better off cutting a much bigger piece than you need and trimming away the excess and adding it to your scrap pile. All right, so we're going to put them right sides together and we're going to line up on that line we just cut with the fabric because we know that's the edge we need to meet. Throw in a couple pins so it doesn't flip forward because we don't want to sew this into our project. Seam ripping with paper piecing is god awful. Just awful. All right, then we come over to the sewing machine. And again, we're going to start a couple ticks away from that line because we're going to anchor it down, remember? And we're going to sew right on that line. And we're going to go a couple ticks beyond 
to anchor on the other side. All right. Take it out of the machine. There's our perfect quarter inch. Now we're going to take our little pins out. We're going to grab our glue stick. We're going to glue this up here because remember, that's the part of the pattern we're going to fold our fabric towards. Then we're going to... Then we're going to lift our fabric. Press that crease and stick down the fabric. Now, isn't this funny? That's actually going to make something. That's actually our pattern. Those three pieces of fabric are actually going to make something. That is just a hoot and a half because it looks so sloppy and messy. It looks like crumb quilting. All right, so now that we've added all the pieces of fabric, I'm gonna take this pin out now, because I need it to come out. We have added all of the pieces of fabric. There are one, two, three pieces of fabric to this pattern. Now what I need you to do is I need you to take your ruler and line up with the dotted line so that you're cutting beyond the dotted line and we're going to go ahead and we're going to trim we're going to trim away all of our excesses and these just go in the scrap bin remember we like scraps all right so we've got one side we've got our quarter inch so we know what we have to match up with the next piece because remember the solid lines those are our stitching lines that's where we're going to join our pieces but we need to have that guide so we know where to ma match up our pieces so we're going to go ahead and cut away all of the excess and that is so funny because I followed my finger. So see, this is why you need a little bit extra ruler when you're cutting the outsides. So the two and a half by six and a half will work perfect. Um, and then we're just going to continue this until we get all four sides complete. Isn't that fun? Now, even that is too small for me to keep. So that goes to the trash bin. I know it. I'm really letting you guys down. I can't believe I can't come up with a project for something that tiny. But in the scope of things, we get enough extra really nice projects that we're good to go. Okay, so see our pattern? Isn't that cute? And look at that. You have now paper pieced your first paper piece, and it came out perfect. We don't know what it is yet. There we go. Well, we know what it is because we see the pattern, but as far as the step-by-step -step goes, that was pretty easy. So now we're going to move on to something a little more difficult. We're going to set this one aside. Our next one is Unit D. And unit D starts with a piece of sky in our number one. Now I like to look at my scraps and see that's big enough to fit the whole square, but it's not big enough for a quarter inch seam. So it's just too small for what we're trying to do next. But don't be afraid to use those pieces because nine times out of 10, they're gonna fit. And as little as our project is, yeah, that's gonna fit. So. There we go, that one will fit. Now, remember, put your glue where your pattern piece is supposed to be to help hold it into place on the back side. Now, I knew where to do that because I can actually see my, I can actually see the lines. I don't know that you can see the lines. So, like I said, hold it up to a light fixture Give yourself all the advantage that you can. 
then go ahead and remember right side up on the first piece just the first one so you're gluing the wrong side of the fabric to the wrong side of the piece of paper if you will because the right side of the piece of paper has our pattern all right, now we're gonna do number two next. Number two is a piece of the cat. And remember I told you, save those pieces, they're gonna work. They really are gonna work. So we're gonna grab our piece of cardboard. Ooh, that's number five. Oh, there we go, number two. It's a little teeny tiny guy. Don't worry about folding the pattern in other places. You can multiple fold this paper. It's not a problem. Don't worry about it because we're not cutting it away. We're just folding it back. And then we've got our add a quarter on there. And we've moved that out of the way. There's our quarter inch we're going to match up with. So open up your pattern. Flip it over. Find your piece of fabric. Line up your seams. Now this time, because this is such a small piece, I'm gonna put a pin in because I don't want it to move on me. But we've lined up our edge. We're gonna come over to the sewing machine. We're gonna place it in here. We're gonna start a couple ticks beyond. Make sure everything's laying flat. And it is, and it looks good. We're not worried. And if you have to take it out, well, guess what? You got to take it out. It's not a big deal. We have sewn and unsewn many, many projects in our lifetime. All right, so now you can see that we have the second piece on. Oh, yeah, that's going to be good. I'm going to cut a couple more of these little, little strings out of the way. Grab our glue stick. It's just a little teeny tiny place we got to get into. So I don't want a whole lot of glue in the way. Then we're going to push up. Remember, we're going to be the pressing system. And for now, we're going to pin this out of the way. Because we'll come back to it at some point. All right. Now we're going to come over here. Same thing. We're going to find piece number three. Now, piece, oh good, this is where I get to show you this too. Now, see, we've anchored this and it goes right into piece number three. Oh no, what are we going to do? It's very simple what we're going to do. We're going to grab our car cardboard. We're going to fold back the pattern. See how the fabric comes with it? It's like, oh man, I've done something wrong. No, you have a ring that we sewed which is right there. Oh, and we're gonna have to take that pin out and I really didn't want to, but we really are gonna have to do that. And actually it'll work out okay because we're gonna cut most of that away. Okay, did you see what I did? This was stuck up like this. I just gave it a little tug. I released it so it laid flat. Now I'm going to put my ruler with my quarter inch because remember I need that quarter inch and I'm cutting away all the excess and it's leaving me with a quarter inch seam. Open up your pattern. I need cat. And I still have that same scrap. Oh, and it's gonna work perfect. So if I'm gonna sew it here and flip it up there, it will fit. All right, so flip your pattern over and line up. I need the thicker portion. And I need a straight line, so you'll notice this isn't straight enough for me. So, that's good, because I get to show you how to deal with this stuff. We need a straight edge, so make one. You have a cutter, you know how to do this. Okay, so now we have a straighter edge. See how that lines up nice now? All right. Again, we're going to put a little pin back here. But remember, this is so far away from our seam line, 
We're never going to run it over. Seam lines up here, pins back here. We're never going to run it over. So we're not going to worry about it. So now we're going to flip it over, take it to the sewing machine. We're going to sew along this line and I'll be right back. Because I think by now you guys are probably sick of watching me sew. And hopefully you're sewing right along with me so that we can get this block done together. Because I think it's an amazing little block. And I think it's super cute. All right. Once we get that done, then we're going to come back. Oh, and see... I didn't have a pin in that, so it flipped forward. But because it's such a useless, weird little piece, I'm just going to cut it away. Because I don't need it. I don't need it anywhere. So I'm going to save myself the seam ripping, and I'm just going to cut it away. All right, so now... Oh, doesn't that look good? Oh, how exciting! Okay. Now, if you cut close enough to your seam line, you can literally pick that piece of fabric out. And see, I didn't have to seam rip at all, and now it's gone. All right, so we're going to grab the glue. We're going to put it in the spot where we need. I must always put that down every time I use it. Okay, so we've got the glue where we need it. We're pressing over. Very cool. Doesn't that look funky? <laughs> but it'll be perfect when it's done. Now there's enough glue in there to prevent that from flipping forward. So we're really not going to worry about it. And this excess here, I'm not going to worry about that either because that's going to be cut away. So. I'm not going to pin that. I'm not going to worry about that. Now we're over here on number four. And number four is, again, more cat. And I have another piece of cat. I'm just not sure. Nope, see, that piece isn't going to fit. So I'll have to use that piece for something else. And I'll have to cut another piece. All right, that will definitely fit. Okay, so grab our cardboard. Line up on that first three, because we're going to go from one to four on the one to four line. And we're going to fold that back. And we're going to press. Okay, then we're going to get our quarter, our quarter inch. And we're going to cut this away. See, there's very little pieces here. All right. We've cut away our quarter. We've added our piece. Now we're going to add our quarter inch piece of fabric. Okay, and it does go all the way down here. All right, we've lined up the cut edges. We've got our pin to keep it from moving and keep the fabric from flopping back into our seam line. So we're all set and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and sew that seam and I'll be right back. Remember to start a couple ticks before and end a couple ticks after. You're going to put the needle right on top of the black the black line. And then cut away your threads cuz they're going to get in the way and drive you crazy. Okay. You can see we've got our quarter inch seam. We're gonna take out our pin. We're gonna put our glue right in the area where we need it to flip over. 
Then we're going to flip our fabric over and stick it down. Now remember, we're going to add that pin because we don't want it flopping in the way, but we might have to move that pin later depending on where we sew next. But we're getting there. It doesn't look like much yet, but it will. So flip it over. Ah, uh, see, we're almost there. Now we're going to do between four and five, and it's a piece of sky. And I can use my leftover piece from the junk pile. Perfect. And let's see. Perfect. This is, I've got a nice straight edge, so I don't have to cut another straight edge. That's good. Grab our cardboard. Lay it down on the 4-5 line. Fold back our pattern piece. And see the pin is in the way now, so I do have to move it. Otherwise, I will cut it with my rotary cutter. And I really don't want to do that because it'll wreck my blade. And it'll make me angry because it won't come out nice. You know how it goes. And then we'll go ahead and get rid of all the excess. Put them back in our pile because remember we're going to use them later. The little pieces, just get rid of them. Open up your pattern. Find your piece of fabric. You know, that is not going to be big enough. If I put it this way, it'll just barely make it. This is not big enough. See, that's a good double check. You want to make sure, line up your seam lines and then fold it back. You want to make sure you got enough fabric to cover. Because if you don't, then you're going to end up with a hole in your project. And a hole is never a good thing. All right, I need a straight line here. Because I did not give myself one. All right, right sides together. Lined up along that cut quarter inch line that we just cut. A pin to keep it from moving. Okay, see how we did that again? All right, now we're off to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch on that line, on the four or five line. We're gonna start a few ticks before we're going to put our needle right on that black line. It's going to give us precision, accuracy. We're going to have a nice finished piece when we're done. All right. See, now we've got our, whoops, four or five right here. We got our stitch line and our extra stringies. Flip it over, take out our pin, put our glue where we need that spot to be. And it's just a little spot, so we just need a little pack of glue. Fold it over, stick it down. Okay, now I'm not going to put a pin in yet, just yet, because I know I need to redo or recut. So then we're going to flip it over. This time we're on the five, six line and I need grass. Oops, I need a piece of cardboard and it's on the five, six line and we're going to fold it back. Remember, release that part where we over sew. This one we're going to have to move that little ruler because it's too little. All right, there's that. There's our perfect quarter inch. Fold the pattern back. Now I need a piece of grass that's going to be big enough. And that is not, because see what's going to happen? I will miss this corner. I will miss this corner. That piece is not big enough. I need a bigger piece, which is fine. That's why we have the fabric. All right, now I have a piece that's big enough. I'm gonna line up right on that edge we just cut. I put my pin in. 
because I don't want the fabric flipping back on me. Make sure the pin is far enough away from your seam line that it's not going to get in your way because you don't want to sew over that pin. Start a couple ticks away from the beginning. Line up on that black line. Sew right straight across on that black line. Go a couple stitches beyond. And there we have it. Put it back over here so you can see again. We're back with the glue stick. And the scissors. Whoop. Okay, so we want to glue this area that we're going to flip back into. And we're going to flip that over, stick it down. Because that's what's going to give us that really nice seam allowance. Boy, it's looking like something. I don't know what yet, but it's looking like something. All right, lift it over. Now we need... Now we need to find seven. <laughs> Sorry about that. It took me a minute to find number seven. It's way over here. And it's another one of those itty bitty little pieces. So we're gonna, and it's part of the kitty cat. So we're gonna cut all that off. I really didn't have to go all that way down, but, you know, as long as I was there. Fold it over. Now, number seven is part of the cat. Huh, isn't that funny? I lost myself there for a minute. Okay, here's where we're going. This little piece, this little piece right here. And because I don't need much of a piece, I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to line it up because I really don't need much here at all. And you won't either. It's just a little itty bitty one. Okay, so see how nice and neat. This doesn't exist in our world. We only care about this. Okay, so we're going to sew this one down. Get in on that line. How fun is this? It's coming together. And boy, I have to tell you, these are little pieces. They're probably the littlest pieces that I've ever pieced together. And they're coming out perfect because they're paper pieced. I don't have to worry about the fabric stretching. I don't have to worry about my big old fingers getting in the way anywhere. It works out absolutely perfect. So I'm gonna take my pin out. Uh-oh, did you see what happened? The fabric flipped over and sewed down. So now I need to seam rip that, and I need to do it again. It happens, girls. It happens, it happens, it happens. It's not a big deal. All right, so this time, though, I'm going to put my pin over this way a little bit. That way that won't happen again. So try try again piece of cake we got this we weren't ready for it to be done yet anyway and you saw how easy it was to rip out so don't be afraid really it happens it happens you're gonna get it taken care of take the pin out you get it all in there just right the only thing you got to remember is keep cutting your little threads. Keep keeping them out of the way. Um, you don't want them getting messed into your project. All right. Oh, look at that. Much better. This time it didn't fold over. It stayed flat. Progress! Woohoo! Okay. Now this one is just a whopping tiny little piece here. Just a whopping tiny piece. And we're going to flip that over and lay it straight. See, I wasn't kidding. It's just a little tiny. I believe we're working on the tail. Don't quote me on that because I don't know. 
but I do believe that we're working on the tail here. All right, so we're gonna flip it over. Gosh, isn't it cute? Hmm. Flip it over, and this time we're gonna do between seven and eight, which is right over here. Can you see where we're doing? Fold that pattern back, release our over stitching, grab our ruler, cut a quarter of an inch beyond where we folded the pattern back so that we have that nice edge to match our pieces up with. Get rid of the cardboard, open it flat. Piece number eight is sky. So it's going to be a blue one. And again, it's a little bitty one. It's not big at all. Oh, good. We can use more of our scraps, which I think is fantastic. So see all those little pieces we save? They really do help. So we're lined up here. We're pinned way back here. We're ready to sew again on the line. And there we go. And there we have it. We're going to get rid of these little stringamajigs. Make a little pile of them and throw them in the trash so I don't vacuum them up. I tend to do that too. How about you guys? Either that or I'm wearing them all the time. Okay, then we're going to pull that out. We're going to add the glue to that little tiny piece that we need it to be in. We're going to flip it up and we're going to press it down. Oh, ooh, look at that. We have a cattail. See? We're shaping our kitty. All right, so... This is repetitious, and it goes over and over and over. I think you have it. If you don't, press rewind. Watch how I did it. Do it. Press rewind again if you didn't get it right the first time. Don't worry, and go through and do each and every one of these pieces. And when you get all of those pieces paper pieced, then come back and meet me right here, because I'll hurry up and get mine done. We'll meet right here. And then I'll show you how to put all of these pieces together to make a finished block. So get at your piecing and I'll be right back. Okay, so how would everybody do getting your pieces and parts together? You should have a bunch of little tiny pieces that look like this. <clears throat> And at this point, you're going to trim it up. You're going to cut on that dotted line all the way around each of your blocks so that they look nice and sharp and all set up and ready to go. But for the most part, here is our lovely little kitty. I'm so excited. I got so excited, I started putting stuff together. So now I have to get you guys all caught up to where I'm at. I, I'm just, I'm so excited. Isn't that cute? I love it. I just love it. When you're looking at your pattern, you should have your blocks, each of these individual blocks, and they're all going to be trimmed up. And the very first place to start is with unit F and unit E. Now that's going to be your pumpkin and your pumpkin stem. You want to go ahead and sew these two pieces together. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're going to want to sew these two pieces together so that it's the right size to sew next to the blocks that are next to it in the rows. Okay, so make sure you start with units F and units E and sew those two together. Once you have those two sewn together, it's just like a simple nine patch. That's what's so great about this. You've got three pieces, three units that you're gonna sew together in a row. And then you have three units on the top and you're gonna sew these together in a row. <clears throat> a couple little things to think about. When you put these together, you're gonna match the cut edge just like we did when we were paper piecing. 
Okay, so you're gonna match corner to corner. What's really fun about this is that you can literally stick a pin in the corner of one and it should come out the corner on the back side of the other if you have them lined up right. Okay, so that's kind of a little double check for you. You can put a pin in that one and you can put a pin in this one and then you can lay them out where they need to be in between. Now the joy of these two rows is that they don't match up with the seam lines so you don't have to worry about nesting any seams. You can just push them all in one direction and go. But it's basically the same as when we sewed our paper piecing paper paper piecing pieces together. Boy, that's a tongue twister, isn't it? You want to match the edge up here, the raw edge is up here. You want to put a pin in it because with all this paper, it tends to want to slide around and go places. Now, when you get to this little neck part here, you're gonna wanna make sure that both sides match up so it doesn't look like you're choking your little kitty cat. You want his neck to line up nice and straight so he looks good when he's finished. Don't be afraid to put pins in here. Pins are your friend. They're gonna keep everything from sliding around. When you get to this point, however, <clears throat> You're not going to want to keep that teeny tiny seam allowance. At this point, you want to go to a regular seam allowance, your two. Um, some of you may even have 2.2 as a setting for a normal stitch. You have too many layers and you have too much paper. And so to put those teeny tiny little stitches in is going to bunch things up. It's going to shift and move them. So this is the only place when you're doing um, your piecing together with paper piecing that you're going to have a normal stitch length. And that's when you're putting your rows and blocks together because you don't want them to get all... Um, all messed up at this point. You've worked way too hard. And then it's just a matter of sewing it just like you would any other quarter inch seam. Now if you're finding that it's way too much bulk, don't be afraid to start in the middle of the block and sew all the way out in one direction and then come back to the middle and sew out in the other direction to finish putting your block together. That's totally acceptable. And sometimes when there's too many, um, too many pieces to put together with the, uh, with the paper piecing, too many little subunits, I will do exactly that. I will start in the middle. I think with our block, however, I think we're safe enough just sewing like a regular quarter inch seam. We don't seem to have a whole lot of bulk in this one not too many tiny pieces. You might argue with that, but I'm hoping that everybody had great success. And then when you get that together and you open that up, see how nice his little neck goes together? It's not all scraggly and looking like he's all choked. His little pumpkin is beautiful. He's all set and ready to go. And at this point, if you want to, you can border him out and make a wall hanging. Or maybe you had such a good time doing your blocks that you want to make a whole bunch of these and put them together in a quilt. Whatever the mood strikes you. Remember, you're in the creative seat. It's up to you what you want to do with him. I really hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. Please remember to like this video and hit the subscription button if you're enjoying all of these videos with us. We sure appreciate you coming along. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this Halloween project from Being Cozy Stitching. And we want to thank you ever so much. Happy stitching. Bye for now.